Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Um, we won't be doing any uh, actual Feynman video, uh, integration in this video today. Uh, we will be using a result that I derived using Feynman integration. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and count it. Um, but anyway, the problem we're going to be solving is this. And I got, I got this integral off, as I often do, off the channel Maths 505. I like to, uh, to take his, his problems that he does and try to incorporate Feynman integration, or at least solve them in a different way, and maybe express the answer a little bit differently. As you guys know, I'm fond of expressing <clears throat> uh, my answers in the form of infinite sums, and that's what I'm going to do today. So we're going to find an, uh, an infinite sum representation uh, for this integral right here. Um, all right, so the first step is we're just going to kind of manipulate uh, the integral a little bit. You can see I, I just multiplied the top and the bottom by e to the t. So, so now we have this. And then the next step is to make this substitution. We're going to let u equal e to the negative x, and all the rest of that follows from that substitution. So, that is going to transform our integral like this. The bounds will change. Well, basically, I just I, I plugged in, uh, well, we know u is equal to e to the negative x, so um, e to the negative infinity is 0, e to the negative 0 is 1, and then I, I literally just replaced x with what, what we know it is from our substitution, which is natural log of 1 over u. All right, and then the next step, just simplify, just simplify that a little bit. Um, this negative one to the s right here, that comes from the properties of logarithms. When you uh, when you use when you use the properties of logarithms on this, you get negative natural log u, and then that's all raised to the s. So you can bring that negative one to the s out. So that's where that comes from. Uh, and then the rest is just simplification. I'm sure none of you would have would have any problem with that at all. Alright, and then the next thing we're going to do is recognize the following, um, that 1 over 1 minus u times e to the t is equal to that infinite sum right there, and that's that's pretty easy to show um, using uh, 1 over 1 minus x is equal to the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the n where we just replaced our x with u e to the t. All right, so no, no problem there. And next, we just replace this, which is right here, with this. And this is what we end up getting. So it looks like we're making things a lot worse, but don't worry, it'll, it'll all come together in the end. All right, so next. All I did was I manipulated this a little bit by uh, switching the um, integration and summation notations and then bringing everything that did not depend on u outside the integral sign. All right, next we make another substitution. We're going to let w equal negative natural log u uh, which implies all of the following. And then we plug that in. Uh, we plug that into our equation right here. It looks like I better zoom out a little bit. So I just replaced um, u with e to the negative w uh, from here to here. And then, of course, change the bounds of integration and all that. And you'll notice that this is this is nice because um, this negative one to the s was kind of causing a little bit of anxiety, um, but it cancels because now we have this negative w to the s, which is negative one to the s times w to the s, and that negative one to the s can come all the way outside both the integral and the sum. So the next step shows that. That would be, by the way, that would become negative one 
to the 2s, which is negative 1 squared to the s. Negative 1 squared is, of course, 1. Anything, uh, 1 to the anything is just 1. So it, it goes away. And now we're just left with this. All right. And the next step is yet another substitution. We're just, and this is this is kind of a tri trivial substitution. We're just letting z uh, equal to w times 1 plus n because I want to make this uh, negative, uh, e to the negative, uh, just some dummy variable. All right, that implies 1 over n plus 1 dz equals dw. All right, and then uh, performing that substitution gives you this. I, I literally, you know, just plugged in um, W equals Z over 1 plus N. Okay, and the next step is, of course, some simplification there. Okay, so you can see I brought this negative 1, this 1 over negative 1 to the S outside, and then we have an additional factor of 1 over n uh, plus 1. So that becomes 1 over n plus 1 all to the 1 plus s outside our integral. And then we're just left with this integral, which a lot of you probably recognize. This, this is an integral that I, uh, I solved using Feynman integration. Um, you can... Go ahead and search my videos. Uh, it's basically the uh, integral representation of the factorial function. And basically, this is this is true. Uh, the integral from 0 to infinity of z to the s times e to the negative z dz is equal to s factorial. Okay. So, that means we can just replace this with s factorial. And you know, some some people might like to use the gamma function. I, I just I I like using factorial because it's the same thing. They're they're directly related to each other. Um, if you know one, you know the other. So if you prefer uh, using the gamma function, just go ahead and transform it into the gamma function. Um, but this is what we end up with. So our original integral is actually equal to this sum, which transforms uh, easily enough into this sum. So this is the answer, um, that our original integral, oh, way up there, this, that integral, can also be expressed as this sum. And I don't know if I mentioned it at the beginning of the video or not, but there are uh, there are some restrictions on s and t. Um, we have to have t less than zero, and we have to have s greater than negative one. Um, otherwise, that integral will not converge. As, assuming we're talking about real numbers, so these restrictions are necessary. But if those restrictions are met, then this integral is equal to this sum. And this sum uh, converges very, very quickly. Um, so you can get a, uh, a pretty good um, approximation for the value of that integral. But you don't, need, you don't need very many terms to do it because this e uh, to the n will explode um, very quickly. Um, and also for, you know, high values of s, uh, this, this term will converge very, very quickly as well. So you, you only need about, uh, you can get very close with five or six terms of this. So anyway, guys, that's my video. I hope you enjoyed that, and we will see you next time.